Hello Year 7, um, welcome to today's lesson where we're going to be looking at what problems did William face as king. So as you know we left um, last lesson with William having won the Battle of Hastings and most of you wrote your assessments on it. Those of you who haven't will be writing them when you come back so make sure that you go over uh, some of the reasons we looked at. A lot of it is online so if you didn't access it um, in lesson make sure you go over this on Show My Homework and have a look at the events again. But today, as I said, we're going to be looking at what problems did William face when he actually became king? So our learning outcomes for today, we're going to assess the problems facing William after the Battle of Hastings. We're going to assess which were the biggest problems for William and explain them. And we're going to look at what solutions William could use and which ones he chose and why this might cause some further problems. So let's get started. As a little start today, I've got some quick questions that I want you to do using some knowledge recall. So as I go through these, try to write down the answers as we go. So question one, name the two leaders that fought at the Battle of Hastings. So write these down. Who do you think it was? Who were the two leaders that fought at the Battle of Hastings? Question two, write down two types of soldier that fought in William's army. Now this one we might not have looked at completely, but you definitely should be able to work it out from some of the things we've spoken about over the last few weeks. Number three. How did William's army get Harold's men to come down off the high ground? So how did William get Harold's men to break that shield wall and come down off the hill? And question four. Who won the Battle of Hastings? Now we should all get this one because I've actually just spoken about it. So if you could pause the video here, have a go at answering these four questions, and then we will come back and I will give you the answers. Okay, great work guys. So let's go through some of the answers. So question one, name two leaders that fought at the Battle of Hastings. That would be William of Normandy and Harold Godwinson. So William of Normandy and Harold Godwinson. The two types of soldiers that fought in William's army, you could have knights and archers. You could also have something called infantry. So infantry are normal soldiers with spears and swords. Knights were the ones that fought on horseback and archers obviously fought with bows and arrows. So any two of those three would give you the correct answer. Question three, how did William's army get Harold's men to come down off the high ground? They used a false retreat. So we should remember this, they pretended to run away and they got uh, Harold's army to chase them down off the hill and that broke their shield wall and it made it much more easy for William to kill the army. And finally, number four, who won the Battle of Hastings? We should all know this one. It was William of Normandy. Right, so let's move on. So after William won the Battle of Hastings, he was crowned king on Christmas Day in 1066. But what problems do we think William might have had? Let's have a think about that. William has come from another country. He's just defeated the Saxon army. Most people living in England are either Saxons or possibly in the north. Some of them are still Vikings and they have just been taken over by this Norman king. What problems do you think William will face? Do we think that people will necessarily agree with him? Do you think they'll want him to be their king? Do you think he's going to be able to communicate with them? Do you think he's going to be able to get local people on side? These are all questions that William has to face. So I want you to have a think for a second, pause the video and see if you can come up with any problems that you think William might face. Okay, so let's have a think. Well, firstly, William doesn't speak the same language, so that might be a problem. So if you put that down, that's a really good one. William's going to want to put people he trusts in important positions, and that means he's going to get rid of those people holding positions now. And so those people are going to get quite angry. Those Saxon lords who are removed, they're not going to be happy with this. They're going to be angry towards William. He's going to have to bring in his own Norman army. So the Saxon army, or what's left of it, will be dismantled. So those soldiers might cause problems for William. 
He's got to take control of each area of England. Yes, he might have defeated Harold, but that doesn't mean that everybody in England is suddenly just going to accept him as king. So he's going to have to secure every part of the country to make sure that everybody is loyal to him and following what he says. So just thinking about what we do know, we can already identify some problems that William will face. But let's have a look at those problems in a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's have a look at task one. What problems did William face when he became king? So on the right hand side, you will see a table with boxes one to eight. And these identify some of the problems that William faced when he became king of England in 1066. What I'd like you to do at home is write one to eight down the side of your page. Then we're going to read each box and decide whether it is a short term problem, so something William can deal with fairly quickly, or a longer term problem, which is going to take a longer period of time for him to solve. So let's do the first two together. So let's have a look at box one. There was still a threat of invasion from Harold Hadrada's Viking supporters in Norway. Hadrada's supporters in England are rebelling near York. So even though Harold Hadrada was dead, William still faced some serious opposition from uh, the Vikings in Norway and those Vikings still living in England. Now this is a bit of a different box because this one we can split into both a short and a long term problem. The threat of invasion of Harold Hadrada's Viking supporters in Norway is a long term problem. William is going to have to prepare himself for possible invasion from Vikings or other countries uh, and this is going to take him a while to do. He needs to make sure that the castles are manned by soldiers loyal to him. He needs to make sure he sets up you know, a good network to alert him in case any invasion does come. The second part where it talks about Harold Hadrada's supporters in England that were rebelling, William could deal with pretty quickly. He can send a force to York to put down this rebellion and stop any chance of him being overthrown by the Vikings already in England. So next to number one, we're going to write short term slash long term because it is both a short and a long term problem. Now we'll do box two together as well. So London is the capital city, so must be taken control of quickly. Some of Harold Godwinson's troops that did not fight at the Battle of Hastings are still in London. Now this one is quite clearly a short term problem. William will go to London after the Battle of Hastings and he will quickly be able to deal with any troops that are left over. So he should be able to take control of London fairly quickly. So this is what we would call a short term problem. This is going to be dealt with quite quickly. I'd like you to go through the rest of the boxes, ones at eight, and decide whether it is a short or a long term problem, or possibly both. So read through them and decide whether it is short or long term. You should pause the video here and make sure that you spend adequate time going through each box. Off you go. Okay, great work. I've now got a little extension question that I'd like you to have a go at. Out of those eight problems, which one do you think is the biggest problem that William would face and why? So read through the eight boxes again. Which problem do you think is the biggest problem that William has to deal with and why do you think that might be? You should pause the video here and write your answer as a short paragraph. Once again, pause the video here and write an answer to the extension question as a short paragraph. Make sure you are using evidence from the boxes to help you. Right, by now you should have written your paragraph for your extension question. And so if you haven't, make sure you pause the video and do that. If you have, brilliant, we're going to move on now and have a look at some of the answers. So here are the answers to your table. If it is in red, that shows that the box was a long-term problem. If it was in green, that means it's a short-term problem. So have a look down your list of one to eight and tick the questions you got right and correct those you've got wrong. If you've got a red pen, that's great. Make sure you do your corrections in red pen because we're gonna be sticking this work into our books when we come back. So remember, red means that it's a long-term, green means it's a short-term. So pause the video here and check your answers 
from the previous activity. Okay, now we're going to have a think about that extension question. If I was to pick out the biggest problem here, I would pick out box four. William needed to reward the people who had helped him conquer England to make sure that they stayed loyal to him in the future. Now the way people were rewarded back then was by being given land to rule over. And the reason why I think this is quite a big problem for William is to give them land, he has to take land off of the lords that are already in England. And this is going to create even more friction and anger between the Saxons and their new Norman lords. So this is going to increase the chances of William facing rebellion, which means he's going to face quite a difficult time trying to keep control over the whole country. Now we're going to have a look at task two. So why were these problems? Well, there was a threat of invasion and rebellion in the north of England. The invasion from the Vikings and rebellion from people already living in England. He needed to reward those who'd helped him uh, to help him take over and control England. He needed to make sure that the English obeyed his new laws. So any new laws he made, he needed to make sure that people followed. If people didn't follow his new laws, he couldn't really call himself king. And finally, William only spoke French, but his people now spoke English. So there's this big communication problem between William as a king and the people he is ruling. So what we're going to have a look at in task two is what solutions are there for William to overcome these problems? And I want you to try and pick which ones. So let's have a look. So task two here. I want you to read the possible solutions for each of William's problems on the right hand side. And then I want you to identify which solution you think William will choose to solve each problem. So let's have a look at the first one together. So the first problem. William, I'm under threat from Norway and the lords in the north. So what should William do? Should he A, just let the Vikings or the people in the north keep control of it as it's cold anyway and it's not really important? Should he uh, welcome them to come and talk with him, the people in the north, and come to an agreement with them over how uh, the north will be ruled and how he will act with them? Or C, should he make the people in the north of England surrender by use of force? So for that one, you should put A, B, or C. So you, if I thought the answer would be he should make them surrender, I would write one C down on my page. I'd like you to pause the video here and have a go at answering each of those. So work your way down, choosing what you think William should use as his solution for each problem. So pause the video here and complete that task. Okay, brilliant. Now we've got a little extension uh, for those of you who want to have a go. Um, what problems might William have if he chooses the wrong solution? So think about some of the solutions there. If he picks the wrong one, why might that cause him more problems? I want you to try and write down two or three ideas of what problems it could cause him if he doesn't select the right solutions. Okay, let's have a look through some of the answers for task two. So, let's go through the answers together. So number one, I'll tell you what he does do. So William was under threat from the lords in the north, so he made them surrender by use of force. So he took his army up north and he made them surrender. This is called the harrying of the north, and we're going to have a whole lesson on this one um, about how he burnt people's crops and stopped people ever being able to live on certain parts of the land. I must take control of London. He marched to London and killed the English soldiers there. So he took control of London very quickly. He needs to get rid of the soldiers at the castle in Dover. Um, we'll come back to that one. So four, my knights are expecting big rewards for fighting. Um, he says... 
he gave them English land. So to reward the people who fought for him, he gave them English land. Number five, how can I make sure that the English obey my laws? He made everybody swear an allegiance to him. So he made everybody promise that they would follow him as their new king. Number six, I need to have an army ready, but it's expensive. What William did was he found out how much everybody had. So he did something called the Doomsday Book. So he sent people around to record exactly who owned what and how many sort of animals or livestock or properties they owned. And that way he was able to tax them the maximum amount. And so nobody was able to hide their money from him. So he was able to or sort of collect large amounts of taxes to fund a big strong army which he could then use to control England. The last problem he faced that he couldn't speak the language. So what did he do? He made everybody else learn French. So he made the English learn French if they wanted to talk to him and if they wanted to hold any kind of important positions. Uh, so let's go back to question three. I need to get rid of uh, the castle of soldiers at Dover. What did he do? He killed the soldiers and moved his own men in. So looking at this, we can see that William actually ruled a lot by force and fear. He made people promise to be loyal to him. And if they weren't, he used his army to crush them very quickly. He taxed everybody there to make sure he had a very strong army to do this with. Now, how might these decisions made by William have made the Anglo-Saxons feel? So this idea that he's ruling through fear, he's crushing anybody who stands up against him, he's making them promise to be loyal and learn his language. How might that make the Anglo-Saxons feel? Try to use some of the examples from the right hand side in your answer. This shouldn't be too long an answer, just three or four lines explaining how you think the Anglo-Saxons would feel about how William's uh, decisions would uh, would have impacted them. So pause the video here, and have a go at answering that extension question. Okay, brilliant. Right, let's get on to our final activity today, our plenary. So I want you to think, you're an advisor to William, and he's just been made King of England. What three bits of advice would you give William on how he could control and protect England now he is King? Now to help you with this, I've put some key words around the edge that I think you should use. So armies, government, rebellion, laws, language, castles, and money. You don't have to use all of them, but I think you should at least try to use three of them. So could you write down three reasons or three bits of advice you would give William on how he could control and protect England now he is king? You should pause the video here to write down your three pieces of advice. Fantastic work, Year 7. Thank you so much for your hard work today. Could you make sure that the work you've completed today you bring with you to your first lesson back? If you submit it on Show My Homework, your teacher should be able to print it off for you during the lesson. But if you've done it on paper, please bring it with you so we can make sure that all work is stuck in our books and we are kept up to date. Thank you very much, Year 7, and I look forward to your online lesson next week, which will again be posted on the day of your lesson. Thank you very much.